So hey guys, we've been doing these videos for a couple of years now, and we've never actually done a video with three people in it. So all three of us gonna, together. The gang's we're gonna all give here. this a try. The computer might explode. <laughs> what if we break the internet? <laughs> I, if you Google Google, you break the internet. I don't know. <laughs> we only have one learning target to tackle here, and that's explaining how magma evolves and changes over time. Awesome. All right. So we're looking at a really simple demo that we have down in the bottom here. Okay, so we've got this like beaker full of rocks, yeah. and then we heated up the rocks, and what happened to it? Some of the rocks that happened to melt at a lower temperature than others started to melt, and so now that melt of the lower temperature rocks is surrounding the higher temperature rocks that are still solid. So the whole thing didn't melt at the same time? The whole thing didn't melt at the same time. Okay. So we have different melting temperatures of those different rocks that are in here. Mm -hmm. So we only heated it to a certain temperature and it wasn't hot enough to melt everything in there. And that sounds like partial melting to me. It sounds like part of what we've been talking about for a couple weeks now with Bowen's reaction series, right? Mm -hmm. So the diagram in the top actually shows us on the left side before melting if you look at the different colors of squares the lighter color squares are like felsic minerals mm -hmm. and the darker qu color squares are more like the ferromagnesium or the mafic minerals mm -hmm. and as you start to increase the temperature the first thing that's going to melt are the lower temperature felsic minerals mm -hmm. so if you don't go up to a high enough temperature what are you going to sure. get in that magma mr z yeah, well then, if you don't go up to a high enough temperature, then the magma is not going to have iron, magnesium, olivine, amphiboles, all those um, mafic uh, yeah. mineral groups. So you're partially melting the rock. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really interesting to know that in almost all cases, geologists believe that when there is igneous activity, you never take a bulk volume of rock and melt the whole thing. Mm -hmm. It's always just partial melting. So how do we know that? All right, I'll help you. <laughs> so the reason we know that is we believe that the composition of the mantle is ultramafic. It's peridotite, and we don't see volcanic rock that's that composition. Okay. Yeah. We only see the peridotite coming out when it's torn off on the way out. So like when we like tear like a xenolith, so like we're tearing off part of a rock and bringing it up with us. Yeah, but it's solid the whole time. It was never melted. So it never melts the right, whole time. Right. Okay. So that's how we know about partial melting. Okay. So let's move on to thinking about well, what happens to the magma as it's crystallizing, as it's evolving. Okay, so we've got this magma chamber here, and so as it starts to cool, more of the mafic materials start to crystallize. Mm -hmm. And they're really high in magnesium, really high in iron, and they're really dense, so they're going to sink. Yeah. Okay? So we can see that with the crystals here, and as they start to crystallize, as they start to solidify, they sink towards the bottom. And let's think in back to Bowen's reaction series like we've done in the past before break. So what's the composition of those crystals, Mr. Z? Uh, so if we take a look at olivine, which is the first thing to crystallize out of Bowen's, we've got silicon, oxygen, the isolated tetrahedron, combined with iron and magnesium. Cool. So it's the first thing that's going to come out. It's going to solidify, crystallize, and then sink to the bottom. All right. So let's see what happens as that magma continues to evolve then. So as we start, we've got this first uh, part of the magma that's going to have a first composition of, they call it A, but we see it's a lot of our olivine. Yeah. Okay, we've got our high iron and high magnesium minerals present. Okay, as it starts to cool even more, we start working our way through Bowen's reaction series. So we get the pyroxenes, we get the amphiboles. And the calcium-rich plagioclase feldspar, Thank right? you, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we can't forget about the continuous branch of Bowen's either. Right. So you can see those other crystals accumulating, so crystal settling on the bottom of that magma chamber. And as you're removing the iron and the magnesium and the calcium from the magma, you're depleting the magma in those elements and you're then enriching it in other things like the sodium for the sodium feldspar, the mm -hmm. potassium for the potassium feldspar, mm -hmm. the aluminum to go into the other structures, the micas, and then the silicone and oxygen to make the quartz later on. So by taking out all the iron and the, all the magnesium, we're increasing the concentration of everything else. Right. Okay. And we're moving more towards felsic. Exactly. So by the time we get over to the magma composition B, you've removed by crystal settling mm -hmm. those more mafic minerals, mm -hmm. and then the bulk composition of the remaining magma is probably going to form a granite if it's left in place to cool and crystallize as a, as a pluton, right? Okay, so like this section would be more granitic in nature, so what would be towards the bottom then? 
towards the bottom, you're going to have a layer of dunite, okay. so pure olivine, mm -hmm. and then maybe a layer there that's just the calcium feldspar, so mm -hmm. maybe a labradorite there, um, maybe some pyroxene there as well, so enstatite, augite, those things. Okay. Hey, Mr. Zimmerman, do this one. All right, so assimilation and magma uh, mixing. So if we take a look here, uh, as spe specifically at the picture on the right, I'm not sure if I want to tackle the one on the left there. But if we look at the one on the right, we can see that we have two, are we going to call them magma chambers? Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And they're kind of actually like glomming together. All right? And they're, uh, and they're starting to actually mix. And so it's like if you've got one magma chamber that's already starting to cool and it kind of connects with another one, you can mix it and change the composition of it. Right. So you might think about a convergent plate boundary mm -hmm. where you've got diapirs of magma that are buoying up towards the surface. So and a, di a diapir is one of these guys right, rising right, up. Right, right, okay. right. So they're actually colliding with each other, mm -hmm. and you're going to mix the two together. Okay. So it's like kind of making an almer ar Arnold Palmer. You know, okay. you mix the lemonade and the iced tea and you get a mixed version of it. Okay. So you have then a magma that's got an intermediate composition between the two. Because that melting and that subducting plate specifically in a convergent boundary is occurring in multiple places. It's mm -hmm. not just in one specific spot and it's not just one magma chamber underneath there. Mm -hmm. So that's how we get that convergence of two different magma chambers. Okay. And then the picture over on the left side here, we're showing then assimilation. Um, so you've got a magma that's in another host rock. So even if you look down at the bottom on the left side, you can see too. You've got a, a magma that's a host rock, and it's a certain color. So this is more of an intermediate. Mm -hmm. And you're going to go through that host rock with an existing magma, and you're going to change the composition of the existing magma by assimilating or integrating in some of the existing rock into it. So you've got that diapir, you called it, that mm -hmm. magma chamber that's moving up, yep. and then it's starting to melt the rock around it, mm -hmm. and basically changing the composition of the chamber as it melts everything it's plowing Exactly, through. yeah. Okay. Good. Cool. Right. I think that's I think all we that's got. that's all we have. So that was the last slide for volcanoes. Uh, jump out to your class website, take a quiz, all right. and we'll see you in class. All right. Bye, see guys. You guys. Take care.